Hi, everybody. I have such a great interview today. One of my favorites in wine, our Melissa Ordway is here. And, ah. and, and with her new leading man, <laughs> Connor Floyd. Oh. Hey, nice hey. to see you. How are you? So, Connor, how has this been? You've now started to air, right? Yeah. Are you? Are you reading any feedback from the fans? Or are you like staying away from all of that? What I'm trying to stay away from them. I'm reading the good ones, you know, just to pump me up. But no, <laughs> it's, it's been pretty crazy. You know, um, finally got to air. So hearing a lot of good things. So I must be doing something, right? I haven't got fired yet. <laughs> <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> now, wait, I read, I, I don't know if I read this or this. Melissa, did you, when he was, when Connor was auditioning, did you stop outside the audition room and give him some? pointers or talk to him or well we actually got to the artist entrance at the same time I wasn't working that day and so I saw him and I was like are you auditioning today <laughs> and it never says what the role is so like we kind of were just guessing but since I was reading with him I was like I think that you're auditioning to play my husband and so I was just trying to fill him in on some of the the past storylines and kind yeah. of where things ended before and, and what was your first impression then, Connor, of Melissa at that point? Oh, well, I thought she was lying to me, first of all. I was like, there's no way. There's no way this guy is on a secret mission right now. I don't believe that one bit. I was trying to throw him off. Yeah, but then she was like, no, it's, it's the real deal. So I thought she was great. She was super helpful. She, uh, she was so nice. I feel like we were already friends when we walked in that room, so it was pretty easy to throw up a scene with her. So you walked into this very complicated uh, situation in the storyline where like everything is kind of happening now Melissa did you explain to Connor like how this baby came to be of <laughs> of Abby's like the complicated because if you if you got to follow the bouncing ball a little bit with how this happened don't you think for yeah I was trying to explain to him it's hard because it was like <laughs> such a short amount of time that we had to kind of talk before it all began and, you know, there's a lot of story line to try to fill someone in on like, well, we're, we're going to have a baby, but then we're, <laughs> but then like, I couldn't have a baby because I was pushed so I down thought the she stairs. Was lying to me. I was like, and so I had a miscarriage and then you were shot. And so you're the, you got an infection. So you can't, can it be the sperm donor? You're going to be the father. And so I was trying to fill him in on all of it, but it was very complicated. So I think I gave him like the cliff notes version of it all. <laughs> Again, I will say that I was like 98% sure that he was reading for chance, but it was not like a hundred percent. Like, funny, yeah. Right? <laughs> so Wait, I was like, I was like, I think this is what this is. I, I filmed this scene before with someone else that was playing the role of chance. And I think, what did it say? The scene name was, it was like a different I think name. It was like Mark or something. Yeah. Or and so I was like, I'm, I don't want to give you too much information. Cause if I'm wrong, I could be really bad. <laughs> and I don't want to be responsible for this. <laughs> so Connor, the pace of this show, right? How are you feeling about coming in and working on the soap? It's, 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 a, it's a pacing issue, right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot and I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm, uh, I'm ready for the challenge. I'm really thankful to be here and I feel like it's really gonna excel my acting. You know, this is a, it's a big thing. I remember one of my first days on set with Eric Braden, he told me that this is gonna be one of the toughest jobs you ever get. So you better come prepared. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really taking that to heart. and. Uh, I will say that he, from day one, from the audition was so prepared. Like there has never been a moment where he like, doesn't know his lines, my lines, everybody's lines, like the order of it. Like he is like on top of it and has been killing it. Then you'll fit right in with the Newmans because they have, they like, don't they, <laughs> don't they demand like to know your stuff or yeah yeah I mean I feel like everybody here is just so on top of it and especially I mean Brighton who has like a photographic memory who is knows lines more than anyone that I know he like we've been working with him a lot and so I mean like <laughs> just been Connor's been killing it for sure no, stop. so Melissa watched YNR before she came before you were on YNR you were a big fan of YNR <laughs> right Connor have you, have you ever watched the show before I watched it a little bit, especially when I, I first moved out here, because I've, I've auditioned a couple of times as well. So I was trying to get the tone of it, get the rhythm, figure it out and see what I was walking into. But my all my grandparents loved it. I mean, they're having a ball out there in Texas right now, <laughs> knowing that I'm on right in Texas. Yeah. And now what part of Texas are you from? I'm from Austin. So you know that uh, Melissa's real life husband played Chance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know some big shoes to fill right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, so Melissa, you've had many chances now at this point. I have, I have, you know, um, I've been very lucky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But now you've got Connor. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm so excited to have him here. And like I said, he's just doing such a great job and just the role is was meant for him. So he's killing it. I mean, I, I love you. And I love that you never gave up on me, but coming here, it was the wrong move. Nothing that could make me this happy could possibly be wrong. I was going crazy without you. And I can't imagine what it cost you being isolated like this. But I had to do it. I had to. I mean, I've gone to great lengths to make sure the people that orchestrated that bombing believe that I'm dead. And I'm sure they do. Everyone thinks you died in that explosion. Everyone but me. <laughs> You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I did all of that to protect you and our family. And by coming here, you, you may have undone all that. You may have put that all at risk. No, I was careful. Connor, so what's happening with Chance? Because I'm worried that something happened to his brain in this explosion with, you know, with all these men and everything. Cause you know, there is this whole thing about CTE brain injuries and traumatic brain disorders that happen from traumas in war and all of that kind of thing. Do you think he might be dealing with something like that? That's part of his issue or am I just making this up? Well, no, you know, I think Chance is gonna have a hard time adjusting and he's gonna get thrown back into real life. Um, he's a new father, he's a new husband. So he's coming from this crazy world that he was living in for a long time and that really impacted him in a way. And now he's getting thrown back into real life. So it's just going to be a really big adjustment for him. Right. And how does Abby feel, though, about what she's, you know, she's obviously seeing there's something not right with him in terms of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I definitely think that she thought that he was going to come home and they was just going to, they were going to pick up right where they left off and they were going to just be this happy family and everything was going to be perfect. Um, but, you know, I guess she didn't really realize like everything that he's been through while he was gone. And I mean, even for anyone, I mean, coming into like he, he Chance wasn't a part of the pregnancy. He wasn't a part of any of that. So he's coming home to this baby that he really has like, I kind know. of came out of nowhere <laughs> for him. Like we had talked about it before he left, but all of these decisions were made like before he went, like when he was gone. And so there's just a lot. And Abby is kind of sensing that something is, is off for sure. Yeah. And then of course, uh, Connor, you've got um, the Mariah and Devon situation. Have you worked, obviously you've worked with Cameron and um, Brighton so far? Yeah. Brighton, Brighton a little bit more than Cameron, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, they're fantastic. She was talking about Brighton earlier. He's been such a role model for me on this show so already. And just to watch his little process on set and how he kind of goes about things has been awesome. It's been awesome. Did you do research into, like, if you go on Wikipedia or, like, anywhere and look up Chance's background? Oh, yeah, so I was all in that. I had to learn everybody's name. I had to know did who, not, who. Did you not look at the complicated history of this character? Because then he was this, he was that. Did, it's... I did, yeah. And she was filling me in, too. She'd say something like, oh, yeah, you you know, you got shot or you were, <laughs> you saved this person. I'm like, what? I missed that part. But so Chance has also died before. And Chance like, has died before. Yeah. This guy's a cockroach. I'll tell you what, he can't die. <laughs> he's died before. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's, he's a chancellor too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jeannie Cooper, you know, but Jeannie Cooper was Catherine Chancellor on the show sure. and she was such a staple of the show. So you're like, a chancellor is great to be on the on the show there's not many <laughs> no very blessed to be chancellor yeah that's what's so cool too is because like there are not a lot of chancellors left on the show right now and so it's it's awesome that you get to be a chancellor and that you know i didn't even realize i always forget that devon is is you know Catherine chancellor's grandson as well and so there's like a whole another like underlying thing going on with that too trying so to carry on not that just family the baby, name, but you right? guys are like related <laughs> too yeah. Now, of course, everybody's suspecting and, and thinking that Abby and Devon are going to get together. And, you know, she they've had this long thing for many years with these two. <laughs> and that, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a quadrangle, triangle, bloop triangle, I don't know, but but there's definitely, you know, don't yeah. you agree with that, correct? <laughs> I would agree with that. I, I, every time I get a script, I'm like, are they together yet? Or what's happening? Like, what's going to happen? Because I mean, I was feeling in Connor, like that this has been like, this started even before me, like the character of Abby and Devon, they have always had something going on. And so um, when I first started on the show, 
I, that's been my goal for the past, I mean, it's been like nine years that I'm like, okay, so are Devon and Abby going to be together yet? <laughs> and it's always been like close, but then he was in love with Hillary or I was in love with someone else. And then it just never happened. I invited him to come to Miami with me, which we joke around about a lot. And he rejected me. So, um, that didn't happen. I'm still so offended by it, but no, <laughs> but, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm interested to see, I mean, it could really go anywhere right now. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Although I love what Abby and Chance have going on too. I say, come on, it's got here. I know. <laughs> now you guys, there's a homecoming party for Chance that we're going to see. How does that go down for, is he uncomfortable at this party? Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, it's a lot of adjusting. He's been on his own for a while, and now he's coming back to normal normal life, being surrounded by all these people who are asking him questions, praising him for stuff that he thinks he doesn't deserve. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just going to shock his world a little bit. Am I hovering too much? Just tell me. No, hover all you want, please. Are you sure you're okay? I couldn't be better. The party wasn't too much? No. No, no, no. I'm just, uh, just a little jet lag, you know. I had a great time. Promise? Yeah. That Ashton Locke guy, though, he was uh, quite the character. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy that Victoria finally found her perfect match. And what happened to Nikki? I was kind of looking forward to seeing him. Well, I think Nick and Phyllis broke up, so maybe he felt uncomfortable coming to the hotel. Well. It's too bad. Thought they were pretty solid. Yeah. Well, not everyone is as lucky as we are. And he obviously notices the bond that Devon has with his with Dominic. There's a definite yeah. bond there. Yeah. So is he? Do you think he'll be territorial, or do you think he'll be understanding of the whole situation? Well, Chance wants to be a good father, regardless. So I think either you know he's going to watch Devon, probably take notes from him, see how he works with that baby, and <laughs> try to learn as much as he can. Now you both, and Melissa, you were recast in this role too. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple people in that role too. So did you give any pointers to him about, you know, the whole recast thing? But I did, you know, I think that it's hard because um, it's definitely always hard for the audience at first because you get used to something and then it, it changes. But um, I said, first of all, first and foremost, don't read a lot. <laughs> a lot of what you're going to hear online because people can be people like I said like they they get to know their show we're in people's homes every single day and I mean I grew up watching this show so sometimes it is a bit jarring you're like oh wait who is that um but number but make it your own like don't try to kind of repeat what someone else was doing because you're never it's never going to turn out well if you're just copying what someone else was doing in the role so make it your own and um just be confident and uh it takes some time but you're doing so awesome like for real like you're just killing it so i'm um i actually thought you did a great job connor this week and what i i saw unless i was like okay you know Thanks. because you know you have to it's it's a it's a always challenging to win over the soap fan audience because they're you know they're used to uh like a routine a regimented routine yeah. right they're used to seeing the same familiar faces all the time they're used to that's part of the reason they they stick with it, right? It's part of their routine. So when you change it up, you know, it, you can always kind of tell when somebody's going to succeed, I think, and 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 maybe not. Well, I appreciate it. I'm giving it my all for all the fans. I'll yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so hard because we really are like people's family. Like we, we've been in homes for like, what is it, 49 years? Uh, and so it's like, you get used to people and, and being a part of, you know, it just looks a certain way and that's how it is. And you know, it, it's hard when things change, but I think this is going to be a pleasant change. I don't think it, I already know it. <laughs> I already know it. Was there anything that you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connor, was there anything you were surprised to learn when you got to YNR about how it works that was kind of through you for a minute or like way the cameras move, you know, was there- yeah, that, that was definitely an adjustment. I mean, I've been uh, doing a lot of, I've been living in the indie film world, you know, since I've been out here in LA, so. There's a, there's a lot more freedom and movement. So with these, you know, multiple camera setups and the lighting and everything, it's just, it's a lot of like, hey, stick to your blocking and don't cut her camera off or don't get in her lighting. So it's a lot of- Never little, get in my light. Yeah. Don't ever don't get, get in my you light. Or that's, you're out. I know, I got the back end of it. <laughs> Again, I'll tell you what. Don't walk in it, yeah. It's but, so funny, uh, most yeah. of the actresses always say like, don't, when I when I'm like on a set or with them and we're doing interviews, they're like, "You're in my life. Get out of my." 
<laughs> yeah, my life. It's funny though that in real life when I'm talking to people, like sometimes you like are in a shadow, like you end up putting like a shadow on someone's face, and like just in real life, I end up like backing you up, and I'm like, bit. oh wait, like this is not, we're not on camera not right now. Me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was an adjustment, but it, you know, I've got a great scene partner. She's been showing me the ropes, and uh, everyone on set's super helpful and kind of throwing me some tips here and there. So I think I'm figuring it out. So no intimidation. No intimidation at all. I. It's pretty crazy, you know. I I showed up and everyone was so nice and so welcoming, and I mean that's what you want in a job, right? Right. So Melissa, what did your husband say about Connor? What's his thoughts on Connor? Did you do your girls? Did your girls watch Connor? Or no? It's so it funny because the other, well, the other day I was like posting something from Young and the Restless, and Sophie was sitting next to me. She was like, "Who is that man that you're hugging?" And I was like, "Oh, that's my pretend husband at work." <laughs> And she and I sometimes I'm like, I got to work with the baby today. And I always like kind of fill him in. And she's like, Oh, who's your baby? You have a baby at work. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, it's my pretend son. And so she told me yes, or two days ago, she's like, When I grow up, I'm gonna work at CBS and I'm gonna have a pretend husband and a pretend baby. <laughs> and I was like, Well, good for you. Awesome. Uh, you should do that. Uh, I'm like, you should be Sophie Newman Abbott Chancellor. Yeah. <laughs> But Justin's excited you know he's like oh he's you know excited for Connor and he thinks he's doing a great job and it just started airing so we kind of always end up like catching up on shows like kind of at the end of the week we kind of get to to see what happened during the week so I called him and I asked for his blessing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Southern, two southern gentlemen, southern gentlemen. You know? southern gentlemen. that's right yeah. that's right so melissa you have really carried a lot of story in 2021 on the young and the restless you've been really front and center a lot were you surprised at the amount of material that you were given you really run this character through so much we've seen her break down we saw her with the pill we saw her with the you know with the baby yeah. what do you think about how it all kind of played out um, I was excited, you know, as an actress, it's always fun to get to do different things. I mean, for so long, um, Abby was super happy. <laughs> Everything was great in her life and it was like sunshine and rainbows and it is a soap opera. So it was fun to get to play something different in 2021. There was a lot of heartbreak for Abby um, and getting to be a new mom, which is like a, a huge thing in, in Abby's life um, was really fun. It's been fun to get to play that. Um, so I'm, I was just really excited and grateful for the opportunity to get to put everybody's words and, and thoughts into life. You know, that's kind of what we get to do as an actor. So it was, it's been you know, challenging, she, but it's been fun. But she cried a lot. Now you're not a crier. Is that the deal? I, I know you're not a crier for some, I know that, right? Not a crier. <laughs> no, that's why she's so good. Like she can I'm literally really cry. I get so jealous. It's like, bang. When right. I first started on this show, if it said crying on something, I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, what am I going to do? And I'd have to like, really, it would freak me out. And then I had kids and I don't know if it's the exhaustion that I'm just always so tired that that is what helps me cry. Or if it's, I just, my heart grew a few sizes with my, <laughs> like the Grinch, uh, um, having children. And maybe that was it. I don't know. It's become easier. It's never like, it's, it's, it was never something that was like super easy for me in the beginning. And so just the longer that I've been here and working with so many amazing actors that have kind of, I think helped me and, and help me grow as an actress it's become easier it's still not something that I'm like oh I, I have to cry like it's actually if it's not written it's easier for me to cry than if it is written right and Connor how about you are you are you an easy crier or no no I gotta go like behind scenes and watch those like dog shelter videos to get me just really upset and she's like that I'm like dang girl so there's Connor behind the thing with his phone watching his dog <laughs> videos and then he <laughs> Is that well, what you're doing? Okay, I was always wondering what you're doing. Secrets of the soap stars. Secrets of the right. soap um, So, you know, you mentioned Eric Braden, um, Connor, and you mentioned, did you meet Eileen Davidson? Obviously, you've met Eileen. I have, I've had a few. Because she plays mo the mother to Melissa. She was actually one of the first people I worked with, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like one of, the, one of the first, it was her and Eileen. And uh, she was great. She was so welcoming. She Said I was doing a great job, which that was great to hear from her. Um, but yeah, she's been nothing but nice to me. What do you guys hope will happen? Like, I know you don't know far out, how far out anything is, but what do you hope happens? Do you want, do you really want a love story between them, like coming apart and getting back together? Do you, do you, like, how do you see this? Or maybe not together? 
<laughs> no, I definitely want Chance and Abby to be together. I think that it's a really cool thing to have the, all of these families together. Um, they're, they're, it, they, it bonds everybody in, in, in a unique way, um, Newman Abbott Chancellor. Um, but I, I do think it's it would be interesting if it wasn't just like easy for them to just pick up where they left off and it was just so in love all the time. Like it's more interesting if they have, if it gets complicated and there's there's ups and downs, but they ultimately end up together. That would be my my vision of it, but. You, you said something the other day, somebody asked us if you like develop some kind of multi-personality syndrome. I was like, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, like just. <laughs> that, it's a soap opera. Huh? Anything could happen, right? Yeah. 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 I think that would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just, it just, you know, all of the great soap loves have broken up and gotten back together and they always end up in each other's arms and they're in love and, you know, things break them up, but they ultimately are meant for each other. And I think that would be really cool for Chance and Abby. Um, but I'm excited to see what happens because I honestly have no idea. You screen tested together, correct? Mm -hmm. What do you remember from the screen test? So you're doing the scene together. What, what was your takeaway, Connor? You finished the scene. Are you like, I nailed it. I sucked. I don't know. She's what, I'm like, tough on myself. When it comes to auditions, I'm like, every time I walk out of the room, I'm like, man, I could have done that 10 times better. <laughs> I said that word wrong. I messed that line up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And so I definitely walked away being a little tough on myself, but I did okay. <laughs> I remember I thought he was super chill and cool. And I was like, oh, he did a really great job. I loved what he did. And I thought that I was very impressed with how prepared he was. And he, he like, didn't even need to hold the sides. Like he was just, he knew everything that he was going to say. And I, I was very impressed. It was my first, that was actually my first studio test. So I was pretty, uh, you know, I was calm outside, but the waters inside were You running. seemed very calm. They were running. <laughs> I never would have known that. Oh, and so Melissa, did you get to put in a good word for him? I, I wish. No, I, I I was kind of like <laughs> in like Melissa with no filter. I always, uh, that, uh, no. That guy sucks. No. <laughs> he left, like, I was kind of waiting. I kind oh, of like, I hung, well, I hung back a little bit, like thinking mm. that they would be like, oh, what's what did you think? Like wanting my opinion. They were like, all right, thanks, Melissa. Thanks for coming. And I was like, all right, cool. And I, I just That's like, how I felt too. It's like, okay, thanks for coming in. I, like, was, oh. uh, I was like waiting to like just like give my opinion. Like I thought that it would matter and then that it would, you know, that they would want to know. And they they were like, all right, great, great to see you. Melissa, have a great day. I was like, all right, cool. Um, what happened when you got did you get a call? Like, how did you so you're where are you when you find out you are chance? So I was it was like I think I tested on a Friday or a Thursday. And so I had to wait the whole weekend. Ooh. And then my agent actually told me that whoever was, you know, they were waiting for them to call. Um, they went out of town or something. So then I had to wait even longer. So I'm sitting at my house, just biting my nails, waiting for this to happen. Oh, I'm so nervous for you just <laughs> hearing this. And I, I remember I was, um, I work out in my garage in my apartment right now. So I was about to get a nice little garage workout on and I uh, got myself real pumped. It's like, I'm real anxious. Might as well just, you know, get a good little pump on. <laughs> and it's all from my agent and I was like oh boy here we go and I always know it's something intense when my agent calls and she goes okay hold on oh and, and they then, get other people and then she right? gets my and she's like okay Tim's here my manager and I'm like oh I'm either like I'm getting fired from something or this has got to be bad news and they told me that I got it and so I remember I didn't even I didn't even get a workout on I think I just turn the music up and had like a little dance party in the garage. <laughs> oh, the dance party. Yeah. Like that as a workout, yeah. you know, little cardio. Was your first call to who family? Like who'd you call? Yeah, I think I think I put my mom and my dad and my girlfriend and my sister all like in one. <laughs> like I was like, hold on, I gotta get everybody on the phone. That's amazing. I just had a full on party. Yeah. Aww. That's amazing. Melissa, what do you remember when you got the role? It wasn't like that. You didn't have to wait three. <laughs> I remember I, I was like, I just got a call. They want me to um, play. I was so excited. I called my mom. Actually, Justin was in the house. I didn't even tell him yet. I went, I went and just called my mom. I'm like, they want me to um, come in and they play a role of Abby Newman on Young and the Restless. And my mom was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, what? Because my mom watches the show. She's like, no, they don't. And I was like, she's like, this must be a different role. And I was like, no, no, it's Abby. They said Abby Newman. And I like looked up the character and my mom was like, someone already plays that. She's like, that's not, it's the wrong character. That's not, that's not the right role. And so I was like, oh, okay. And, <laughs> and then she was like, just wait, just call him back and see what it really is. And I was like, okay. So then I did. And then 
everyone was very excited after, but I was like, I was like going through all these like hoops, like trying to be like, I think this is the right character that they were telling me about. And they, my mom's like, nope, nope, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, she was very excited. My whole family was very excited, right. much every single day, but Just much every single day, right? Every single day. My mom has watched every day and my aunt, they have not missed an episode. Like they are devoted fans even before, before I was on the show. So uh, Melissa, what in this whole story, this whole time in 2021 playing Abby, what was the most challenging scenes you did? Um, definitely when they, when Christine came in and said, um, chance is dead and she, she gave me the ring and stuff because there's so much weight to that because there is people that actually get news like that all the time and you want to do it justice. And it was one of those scenes where you, I mean, I didn't have like a reference point because thank God that's like never happened to me before. So you're like trying to figure out like how would someone react in this situation? Um, and so that was definitely the hardest because you, you want to, you want to do it justice because people actually have to, to live through that. So it's yeah. But it's she knew in her gut that he was not dead. She knew. They just have that great love, that love connection that they just know. I knew he wasn't dead. <laughs> so Connor, do you think that coming up, we should just look for him to just continue to struggle with getting back integrated into Genoa City and with the family? Or do you think he will be the loving chance we all? <laughs> well, he's sure gonna try, I'll tell you that. He's sure gonna try to show up. You know, Chance is a, he likes to be good at things, and I think he thinks he's really good at. Well, he is good at things. I mean, this guy's a, this guy's a war hero. This guy's been through a lot already. He's accomplished a lot. He's overcame a lot. So I think he's going to take on the challenge and do it the best that he can. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him. Did you relate to this role when you saw what it was? Like, did you feel like, oh, this is a role I could really do justice to when you knew kind of what it was? And yeah, I did. And, and, you know, he's got a lot of layers to him and I'm discovering new things every day. You know, as soon as I get a script, I read it and find something else. And even on even on set, you know, you, you come up with different things. You talk to the directors and they give you new things to work on. And uh, yeah, I definitely related to him just in the fact that he's, uh, you know, he's striving to be perfect and there's no way that you can never be perfect and nobody's perfect. But this guy is going to try his little heart out until he's perfect, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's the struggle. It's the stress and the struggle of uh, balancing everything in life and, uh, you know, trying to show up for your loved ones and, and do the best you can. Melissa, what has it been like working with Cameron Grimes where, you know, Mariah is so attached to this baby? And I, I love working with Cameron. I mean, she's just so great. She's so talented. And, um, you know, we hadn't really had an opportunity to work together as, as much since when I, when I first started on the show, Cameron and I worked together a lot. We were rivals. We were always fighting each other. We were dumping water on each other's heads. So it's cool to get to work with her in like a different capacity. Um, and so, and also like, my heart, I feel like it was really well written because I think that it showed just the connection that someone has with a baby when you're carrying the baby. And um, I just, I was very impressed with her work. I mean, she did an, an incredible job and um, I just, I thought the writing was really great too when it came to that whole storyline. Well, I was thinking she might do a twist and try to make uh, Abby seem like an unfit mother so she could get the baby. What do you think of that? You never know. You never know. I mean, it could happen. I don't know <laughs> if we're going to live happily ever after the three of us. I don't know. I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. May I, I don't know. I want to know everything. I want to know every little coup, every little gurgle he makes. You got to catch me up, please. No, well, that'll take some time. <laughs> we got all the time in the world, right? How is the baby to work with? The, I'm so happy that we have a real baby now. Instead of the doll. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the real baby brings some challenges, though. Uh, its own challenges. But he's so sweet. And Such I want to just, cutie. like, steal him. And the best part is that he loves Connor so much, this baby. Oh, so you guys have bonded then. Oh, yeah. The baby and back. Connor in real life are so connected. Like, he'll, like, see Connor and he's like, and it's their twin. So what does he do? Well, he's always like, he gets, his eyes get like really big and he gets excited. And um, it's just so sweet because they're just the sweetest, cutest little babies. So the baby likes Connor, not so much Chance. Uh, yeah. Not... <laughs> he's getting used to Chance. Yeah. 
<laughs> in his new face. So he's not really sure who he is yet. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both so much for taking some time today. And it's great to see you, Melissa. Great to see you. I'm excited that for your music and all the stuff yeah. you have going on. Thanks for yeah. having us today. All the stuff going on. And Connor, welcome to daytime. Welcome hey. to Young and the Restless. Hey. You're in great hands with Melissa here. Um, well, you know. we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see <you> later, how it works. Six months and we'll see. <laughs> Have a great day, guys, and Happy make holidays. more Thanks of them on the Young and the Restless weekdays. Bye-bye.